this is so the the concept of like the support infrastructure is a thing I've been thinking about for about a year now, because um, mm. I've gone on this whole project of like f- giving financial advice to creatives. Uh, is yes. this thing because it just doesn't really exist out there. So what I, I'm curious, like what brought you to that point of I want to build I want to build something that's going to be helpful to my fellow creators. So first, I was trying to not quit stand up comedy. Right. Sure. <laughs> sure. I was trying to stay in the game and I got this fellowship um, and it came following the pop culture collab fellowship that I received to report on um, comedy pipelines and kind of like how we arrive at funny, you know, and how we sort of globally think about funny and especially in America and especially in pop culture. And one of the things that I felt as an artist was that we write about these things and we report on them and we may work within them and create portfolio work. And then it's like, you have to start from ground zero again with like double the expectation (laughs) and you've got to make a whole new case for funding, a whole new case for collaborators. And I thought this really depletes the talent pool of artists. Um, and it, this dramatically limits the kinds of voices. Certainly, we're not going to hear from as many of the global majority, aka marginalized voices, um, in the in artist scenes, and and even more so with the economy hit, as you well know. Um, and so then I thought, you know, I really want to work on artist safety and all aspects of what that means. So I started out by thinking about digital security, but then everyone I talked to was like, well, that's something for the FBI. You know, like it's either you're fine and then your home address and your family's home address and all your documents are online and you're not fine and you're almost dead. And then somebody will help you, you know? It was like, what? And then as I started sort of like note swapping with other artists, I noticed, dang, folks are tired. It was 2020. Um, I was in two different sort of small collectives considering exit strategies. People were exhausted and no one was really up for note swapping. Like it helped that I had the fellowship. And the only reason why I felt like I got their time as artists who had experience doxing death threats, you know, threats to their safety and security um, was because they saw my fellowship as like some form of infrastructural support for change. Interesting. And, um, you know, meanwhile, the philanthropists I was talking to were like, artists should organize. And I was like, yeah, I don't think that's, (laughs) that's not the end all be all folks. There's more to it than that, right? Like there's, you know, being organized (laughs) is like step one. Then there's all these other things. Yeah, well, and before we even got started, I found none of us had a sort of vernacular that we could agree on that we could use to organize anything, you know, and the conversation around the arts was a lot of like, either you have it or you don't, either you're talented or you're not, or, you know, and it like, there was so much in our language, in our infrastructural development, and folks' expectations in arts organization that really was taking so much for granted. And one of the conclusions I came to was that the most depleting thing for artists right now is self-driven resource management. And you know, like I saw on one of your episodes, you talking about what a gift it is that like Calendly provides you with such a phenomenal infrastructural base. And it, it's little things like that, right? Like these small um, potholes get in the way of our art, artistic development. And then there are the trenches to boot. 